A few short weeks ago, ASEAN leaders gathered in Washington for a historic summit hosted by President Biden. We were delighted to welcome Prime Minister Ching to DC for that special summit, where we agreed to elevate the US-ASEAN relationship to a comprehensive strategic partnership. It was fantastic, marking a new era in the relationship as we continue to strengthen cooperation. The United States also supports ASEAN centrality because it's in our interest to do so. The futures of the American people are connected to this region. Southeast Asia is the fourth largest market for U.S. goods. American companies have built supply chains with components based in this region, from textiles to plastics to electronics. Fully one-third of global trade passes through the South China Sea. So what happens here matters for the health of the American economy, for the state of American jobs, and for the well-being of the American people. Last fall, the United States released our Indo-Pacific strategy. Like any good foreign policy document, which I'm sure you're learning here, it has several pillars. First, building a free and open Indo-Pacific, which includes ensuring the nations of the region agree upon transparent rules of the road and that those rules are applied fairly. Second, forging interconnectivity and collective capacity, which means strengthening alliances, organizations, and partnerships across the region, like ASEAN and the Mekong-US partnership, because we know we can achieve more working together. Third, driving Indo-Pacific prosperity, which is all about helping nations deliver better results and higher standards of living for people. Fourth, bolstering Indo-Pacific security, including by enhancing our own ability and that of our allies and partners to defend against aggression. And fifth and finally, building re regional resilience, because we are only as strong as our ability to respond to shared challenges like the climate crisis. I wanted to give this brief overview because there is a remarkable convergence between the United States Indo-Pacific strategy and ASEAN's own outlook on the Indo-Pacific. Both documents prioritize achieving peace and prosperity. Both highlight the importance of rules-based international order to underpin and enable that peace and prosperity. Both discuss the importance of cooperation on maritime issues, on development, on trade and economic growth, on climate change, both underscore the importance of sovereignty, of equality, and of mutual respect. That's not because the United States influenced ASEAN's deliberations or because we wrote our strategy to comport with what ASEAN had already decided. It's because we really do share a set of common goals, principles, and priorities with our friends and partners in Southeast Asia. And that gives us a strong foundation for tackling the challenges we face and building the future we want to see 